You still doing rehousings in your bathroom? Well, let me show you how to do that much easier and with less stress. Hello Tarantula lovers, I'm Alex and welcome back to Tarantula Haven. The topic of today's video is on rehousing and I was looking through some Facebook groups and just kind of reading the posts and things like that. Sometimes I comment, but a lot of the times I'm just kind of getting a feel for what people are talking about and what's going on in the Tarantula community and things like that. But there was a particular post that stood out to me about someone that was getting ready to do a rehousing. And if I remember correctly, it was a species that was known for being fast and, and bold but not particularly venomous but you know of course they all possess venom but it wasn't something that was medically significant but I remember the post being about them being fearful and nervous and having all their equipment and everything and they were going to barricade themselves in the bathroom and take care of this rehousing in the bathtub and it brought me back to the days in my early days of keeping and I had gotten my HMAX and those were my first old world that I ever got and I didn't really think about rehousing until it came down to it but you know when you first get a new tarantula or any animal for that matter you do your research right you think about all the different things about how to keep them what to keep them in 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 those cases like with my hmac i think about the speed the venom potency i read bite reports all these things and when it came to rehousing all those things jumped into my head and I was fearful and I was nervous. So I know where this person is coming from, but for me to do it now is not the same as when I did it then. I'm much more relaxed, I'm much more informed, and I have a method for doing it so I don't have to worry about getting bitten or bolting or anything like that. So I figured it needed revisiting on how I do rehousings to keep the danger to a minimum on your tarantula bolting from you or escaping or it climbing on you or you getting bitten or you hurting the tarantula because all the, those things are possible if you are, are going into this misinformed and you're also going into this fearful and nervous because you have a tendency to make more mistakes in that situation. So let's go ahead and get on into it and show you how to rehouse some tarantulas, especially if they are particularly speedy or cantankerous. Let's get into it. The first thing you want to consider before even thinking about doing a, a rehousing, and this may go without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, is make sure you have your enclosure ready. Now, obviously you're doing a rehousing, so you're going to need the enclosure. That goes without saying. But what I mean is make sure you have everything inside it that you plan on putting inside it before you even put the tarantula in there. So that way you make sure that everything is set up and good to go. And all you have to do is put the tarantula in there because there's nothing worse than going through something stressful and being all nervous and everything and then once you get it done you think oh I forgot something and then you have to go in there and reach in there and do something else because that just increases the chance that a that tarantula who's already in an agitated state may come bolting back out so this way you can close your, your enclosure sit back whoosh, wash away the stress and just enjoy your tarantula in its new enclosure the next thing that you want to think about is fear. Are you afraid? If you are afraid, and that's a natural response, then you may want to consider holding off or having someone help you or watching some videos, making sure that you are as ready as possible for this rehousing so that you can do it with minimal stress. Now, I understand. I've been there. When I did my HMAC, I was fearful, and I will admit to that because I had read the bite reports. I didn't want to get bitten. I had a deal with my wife that she said if I get bitten by one of these old worlds that that was going to be it, and I didn't want my tarantula keeping hobby to end right as it was beginning. So I had to think about all those things and I was fearful. I was very fearful and um, I, I was really nervous. So all these things lead to mistakes. So whatever you have to do, to wash away that fear, to get rid of that nervousness, to calm down as much as possible, do it. Because the more calm you are, the more confident you are, the better it's going to go. But if you are fearful 
And if that tarantula bolts and, and does something unexpected, you're going to freak out and you're going to drop it and you're going to drop whatever you're handling and it's going to run around and bolt on you. And this can mean that it will hide in a corner somewhere where it's going to be hard to reach. It could hide under something. And now you have an escaped tarantula on your hands. So make sure that you get yourself in a state of mind where you are as as confident as you can possibly be before even approaching that tarantula. Expect the unexpected. Expect them to bolt. They are bolty creatures. They are going to be quick. They are going to they're going to do whatever it is that people say that they do. So the best thing to do is to be prepared for all that and have the tools that are necessary to minimize that as much as possible. And that's where that confidence is going to come in. So that leads us to the next thing. Make sure that you have all the tools necessary that you are going to use for your rehousing and you have them at your disposal. Make sure that you have a game plan so that things go according to your plan and not your tarantula's plan because your tarantula is going to try to mess up that plan as much as possible. But if you have a game plan in mind and you go in there confident with that game plan, then you will most likely be successful. Now, here are a few tools that I use in order to do my rehousings. Um, I use this bottle right here. This is my catch cup, but this bottle is kind of specialized. It is just a buy drink bottle, but I've got a hole at the top right here and I've got several holes over here around the top of the, um, the bulbous part, part of, the, of the bottle here. So obviously I use this to, to bring that down on the tarantula. The tarantula goes up and I've got ways to poke it down and make it go either back down or I can remove the cap of the bottle and make it go this direction, whichever's easier, whichever works best for me. But I have two ways to make sure that the tarantula goes where it's supposed to. If it's a larger tarantula, I tend to use this 32 ounce deli tub right here. And much the same way, I've got holes all the way around. And I use those holes to stick my skewer in so that I can poke the tarantula and prod it to make it go wherever I want to. I also use tongs and I keep two different sizes of tongs. This big one I use mostly to move things around that are in the enclosure that are in my way. So I reach in there, grab them, pull them out, that kind of thing. I don't really use these to poke or prod with my tarantula with. They're just so big. They can easily climb this, especially if it's a smaller tarantula. So that's just something that I don't use for that. This is just for removing things inside the enclosure that might be in my way that keep me from using those in, in the enclosure. And then of course I use a smaller pair of tongs and this of course is just kind of the same thing, but sometimes I can use it to nudge the tarantula around and so on. But again, mostly for moving stuff around, getting webbing out of the way, that kind of thing. So that's what I use for that. Some people may use a paintbrush for moving the tarantula along and that kind of thing. I tend to not use a paintbrush anymore. I used to, but because of the method that I use now, it just is too big and it's too bulky. So I just tend to avoid using a paintbrush. Um, I may occasionally use one if uh, I need to like push a tarantula out, but a lot of times I just, you know, use this stick and, and I'm good to go. For these rehousings, I've chosen three different tarantulas. I've got small, medium, and large, so you can see three different types of tarantulas and how I deal with them. And um, all three of them can be quite speedy, uh, a little bit cantankerous. Venom potency varies. Two of them are, are not so potent. They're New World, but they do have more potent venom than normal, uh, than most of your New Worlds. And I've got an Old World tarantula. She's very speedy and very cantankerous, so I, I expect her to give me the most trouble. I'm going to be rehousing these tarantulas into these tarantula cribs enclosures, the small tree house, the eight inch cube, and the large tree house. My first rehousing, I'm gonna be rehousing my Salmopius Pulcher. She's gotten to that stage where she's no longer a spiderling, but she's you know just entering that juvenile stage. She's gotten a little bit too big for this Amec box, so I'm putting her in something a little bit bigger so that she has more wiggle room and is more comfortable, but my main concern is molting. When they molt in a space that is too confined for them, that's when they have molting problems. So this way I can make sure that she has enough room to molt in the new enclosure. Now about Salmopius, the Salmopius genus, they all tend to be a little bit feisty. They can be fast. They can be a little bit cantankerous and their venom potency is a little bit stronger than most of your New World tarantulas. So yes, this is a New World arboreal. So I definitely want to rehouse her into something that's going to give her a little bit more uh, top space. All right, so let's go ahead and get into that. All right, Salmopius Pulcher. I'm going to be rehousing her into this uh, tarantula cribs small treehouse. 
And um, I imagine she's probably gonna wanna bolt. They're pretty quick. So I'm gonna use my tongs to move this back. And she's hanging on to the cork bark right here. All right, so there you go, you see. So this might actually prove itself to be pretty easy. Sorry about that, that's my phone. Now there's a couple ways I can take care of this. Now I can either use my catch cup and try to get her to climb up in it, or I could just transfer this into the new enclosure and see if I can get her to go in there by just transferring her like that. But let's see, I can probably try that first. So let me go ahead and move this aside and I will open up the new enclosure. And this may go easier than I expected. So let's see, I can take this just transfer it there and then hopefully I can just nudge her off of there oh look at that she bit at the uh, tongs there you see what I mean about feisty so I can take this and there she goes again feisty girl all right come on go to your new place All right, so once I have her off of there, I can just pull the old cork bark out and we're good to go. So that was an easy transfer. I imagine she might be hungry, so I'm gonna try something here. Let me close this temporarily. This next me housing is of my Orphanicus Filipinas, and she's in this embarrassing enclosure, this plastic tub. And um, it was all I had for her at the moment, and now I have something better that I can put her in, but I only get to enjoy her when I feed her, and she's such a beautiful specimen. So I definitely want to put her in something where I can display her and get to look at her, because she makes beautiful webs, and uh, she's just a beauty to look at. Um, this is a feisty species. Orphanicus Filipinas are very bolty, and she has proved even that every single time that I try to rehouse her, she will go into the new enclosure and immediately bolt right back out. So I expect her to give me the most trouble. And uh, she always gives me a threat posture and she's always willing to fight. So let's see how this one goes. For this next one, this is my Orphanacus Filipinas. And uh, she is quite feisty. I am definitely gonna use a catch cup for this one. And I've had her in here for a while. and. Although it looks like a mess, it's plenty of room for her. But yeah, I imagine she's gonna give me a lot of trouble. All right. So if I can get her to walk into the catch cup, she's already halfway there. I might be able to, oh, see, she just slipped right back out. Okay, come on, let's try this again. There you go. All right can trap her in there okay I want her to walk back all right well that might be enough I can pull her out set her down and then take care of the rehouse. So if I have a situation where she's hanging out toward the bottom of the catch cup and doesn't want to go up here, then I can take something and put it underneath just to make sure she doesn't bolt out on me when I put her into the actual enclosure. So I'm gonna do that, move that aside, bring this into view, and I'm gonna want her to go in here, but her past <laughs> record, she will probably try to run out of the enclosure. So I'm gonna try my best to make sure she doesn't do that. So what I'm gonna do is gonna go ahead and bring her over, making sure I still have thing on the bottom and then I can remove it 
Now, if I can get her to go into the bottom of this cork bark right here, she may be, she may feel secure enough to stay there. So that's where, that's my goal here. Okay, so let's see. There we go. Oh, there she goes. She's being feisty. And that's the problem is she wants to fight. So now I can take the lid and I can carefully slide that in here. And this is the reason I chose this cube. I like the way the lid works. It's not a sliding lid. It's just the lid that comes off. So this makes it easier. There she goes. There she goes. This makes it easier for me to just transfer her and then secure the lid and then I'm good to go because I know she likes to bolt out and that's exactly what I want to avoid. So here she is in her new home and she's recently molted. So her colors are just brilliant right now. I paired her once, but it didn't take. Hopefully I can find another male and pair her and maybe get some babies now that she's in her new enclosure. And obviously I forgot to put in a <laughs> water dish, which I'll take care of later. On my last rehousing, I'm rehousing my Salmopis Cambridgei. And this is not Meg Mucklebones. This is a one that was gifted to me by a friend. And this one has gotten some pretty good size on her. I don't really like the enclosure that I have her in. I've got her in a Bulgarium. It doesn't have the front opening lid. It just has a top screen lid that comes off. And I don't really like that. Not to mention, I never really set her up nice. I just kind of have her in what she came in and I didn't really go through and add any decoration or decorate it nicely or anything like that. So I wanted to put her in something a little bit nicer that I can enjoy her in a little bit better. Uh, um, in this enclosure, she has a tendency to want to hide underground, which is not really their nature. They tend to climb around and all that kind of stuff because they're arboreal. So I wanted to give her a setup that kind of lent itself to that a little bit more. Um, Salmopius, another one, uh, they do, of course, are feisty, they're fast, they can climb, they can jump, all that stuff. And of course, their venom potency is a little bit higher. So, you know, than most of your new worlds, but nothing really to be concerned about just going through and, and showing you how I rehouse her. So let's take care of that. All right. And for my next trick. Okay, I'm gonna rehouse this Salmopius Cambridgei. And I'm gonna use the 32 ounce. That's probably the best bet for her. And um, this is gonna be kind of hard because of the, uh, the, I guess it's not a cork round, it's a pine round, which is not exactly the best thing, but it's kind of in the way. So I'm gonna to try to get her to go forward, which she might go into a hole right there, but we'll see what she does. All right, so right now she's just kind of spreading herself out. Got her in the corner there, which is a good spot. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. Don't need that in there to get in the way. And I'm gonna out, pull out this water dish. And this water dish was sent to me by Memories of Violet. And I'll post a link down below in the description if you'd like to order some yourself. They're pretty good. I like that they go in the corner. All right, so let's see if I can get her to go up into the deli tub. Yep, that was easy enough. And I can take a lid, put it underneath. Boop, there we go. Okay, so here she is inside of the, uh, the deli tub. So now the only thing I have to do is to open up the lid of the new enclosure and I'm putting her in the tarantula cribs enclosure. This is the uh, large tree house. And just get her to walk in. Just take the lid off of that. Reach in here with my bamboo skewer and see if I can get her to walk in. Oh, she's being a little nervous. There we go. And that's your new place, girl. And I just fed her, so I don't think she's gonna be hungry, but she's gonna find herself a place to hide right off the bat, which is typical. And I like this cork bark. I hope she uses it. 
and I know I said make sure you have everything in there before you start do as I say not as I do <laughs> now I've got experience with these guys so I know what to expect and I'm not really worried about it but just make sure that you have your stuff all together and I just put that in there give a little bit of water and I'm good to go all right so much nicer I like this much better than the Bagarium. I just wish it had a top lid though. That would make this perfect. All right, and that's it. So there you have it folks, three easy rehousings. It didn't take a whole lot of effort. And I know I said, you know, be prepared with a catch cup and all that kind of stuff. With that Salmopius Poulter, she made it so easy because she just clung on to that cork bark. So sometimes they do that. And as you saw, I remained calm. I just transferred the cork bark to the enclosure and made her move off of the cork bark. So as long as you maintain your composure, as long as you keep your calm, then you don't really worry about all that bolting and stuff. And I did have a catch cup on hand just in case she decided to take off but for the most part, she just stuck around on that um, on that piece of cork bark. And that's kind of what tarantulas tend to do. They stick to what they're comfortable with. If you have them established in an enclosure and you're rehousing to another enclosure, you'll find that a lot of times they don't want to leave that enclosure and they'll, they'll burrow themselves down to the bottom and make it difficult for you to pull them up. That is the, the tendency that most of your tarantulas are going to have. Now, you will have the occasional crazy one that's gonna go straight out, HMAX are one of them, but um, for the most part, a lot of them will really, really work hard to stay inside of that enclosure. And as long as you can coax them into some kind of catch cup, then your worries are over. Once you do that, you have them controlled and then you can move them into the enclosure that you want them to go into. And it doesn't have to be stressful. It doesn't have to bring fear into your life every single time you have to do it. It's just a routine thing. And that doesn't go, that doesn't mean that I don't expect you to have respect for the animal. Every time I deal with my pokies, they make it really easy, but I am always, always respectful and I'm always careful of what I'm doing. I don't let my guard down. Uh, I bring them out for videos, for photography, that kind of thing. For the most part, they're pretty good. They have a tendency not to want to bolt once they're out. They just want to sit still, but I'm always, always careful because I know what they're capable of and I don't want to be caught off guard. So as long as you know that and you treat them with respect, you should be good to go. So it's all about confidence. It's all about knowing what you're doing and it's all about the tools. As long as you have something that you can maintain control with your tarantulas, then you should be good to go. And these are not my methods. These aren't things that I made up. I've learned along the way. Um, I can probably attribute most of my knowledge from Tom Moran of Tom's Big Spiders. Thank you, Tom, I love you guy. But he has been the most help when it comes to doing this stuff. And he will always demonstrate it, even if it's just, just a Brachypelma species, he'll use his catch cup and he practices safe, safe transfer of enclosures and everything. And I commend him for that because I I'm, tend to get a little bit lax about that, um, especially with those easy species. But I know that there's people out there that don't know and they don't know what to expect. So as long as you know that you have that available to you, your rehousings don't have to be a stressful thing. So before I get out of here, if you liked any of those enclosures that I used, they can all be found at tarantulacribs.com. Perfect time for the holidays. If you're looking for a beautiful enclosure, I think that they are some of the best and most beautiful enclosures out there. So if you, uh, there's a link down below in the description. And if you use the code THAVEN10, you can get 10% off your order. And I also wanted to recommend Memories of Violet on Etsy. I'll put a link down below in the description. That's where I got the little water dish that went in there. They come in all kinds of assorted colors and uh, they're, they're different sizes as well. And they work really, really well. I used to buy the little ceramic dishes that I get from Petco, but they are fragile. I've dropped a couple and broken them. And not to mention, they have also doubled in price since I have started buying them. They used to be like $3 a piece. I think they're like 7 dollars a piece now which is outrageous but everything has gone up and uh, that's crazy so I'm definitely going to be or ordering some more of those little corner water dishes um, from Memories of Violet and like I said there's a link down below in the description as well. 
So that wraps it up for me today. I hope you got something out of it. And if you enjoyed it, please give me a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to support this channel, I have a Teespring store where I sell Tarantula Haven merchandise. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. And if you'd like to become a patron yourself, there's a link down below in the description, as well as all the others. Until next time, keep loving them tarantulas and happy rehousing. Thank you.